Okay, now we are going to create our ball script and simply go here in our scripts folder, create a ball script folder inside of it, create a new script, name it ball script and open it here in Mono Develop. Now we need a couple of variables in order to work with this script. So we need a private float, which is going to be force X and force Y. And I'm declaring both of them in one line. And this is equivalent to typing private float force Y right here, but deleting it well here. So these two lines of code are equivalent, but this one is well pr more practical, so to say. So we can practically declare two variables in one row. Next, what we need is we need a private and we need a rigid body. So here I'm going to say rigid body. I'm going to name it my body. We also need two Boolean variables. So they are going to be serialized private Boolean, move left and move right. This is going to determine if our ball is moving left or moving right. Next, what we need, because we saw in the game preview that when we shoot a ball, the larger ball would split into two smaller balls. Now, in order to simulate that effect, we need a reference to that ball. So here I'm going to create a serialized field, private game object, and this is going to be our original ball. And we also need a private game object, which is going to be ball one and ball two, because we are going to use the original ball in order to create ball one and ball two. So as I said, a large ball will split into two smaller balls. And we also need to get a reference to their script. So here we need to create a ball script and this is going to be ball one script and ball two script because we need to also manipulate those balls that we create in order to manipulate their speed and also in order to manipulate the, their, excuse me, direction. And practically that's it. We also need to create a private and also it's going to be a serialized field. So here serialized field, field excuse me, private audio clip and this is going to be an audio clip array and this is going to be pop sounds because we have two of them. So we are going to create an array. And I'm going to create here an awake function. And what we are going to do is here we are going to create void set ball speed. So initially when we run our game, we are going to set the ball's speed. And how we are going to do that, and here I'm going to also call it. So here I'm going to call this. How we are going to do that is based on the tag of our ball, but the force X is going to be equal to all of our balls. So here we are going to set the force X. So force X is going to be 2.5 for every ball. For the largest, large, medium, small and smallest, the force X is going to be the same. But we need to alter the force Y depending on the ball. So how can we do that? Well, we can write a switch in case statement because we know that we have here in our balls or when we select the ball here we have our tags so we have the tag for the largest ball large medium small so on and so forth well we can utilize these tags in order to practically set the speed so here we can say this referring to the game object that holds this script so this script dot game object dot tag, and we can write our switching cases. So we can have here a case. So largest ball. So this is one of the cases. And let me just make sure the tag. So yeah, we have a we have a space separating well the letters or excuse me the sentence the words here. So largest ball. And here we are going to have break and I'm going to copy and paste. This is for the large, medium, small and smallest. So here we have our large, here we have our medium and here we have our small ball and we have our smallest ball. What we are simply going to do here is we are going to manipulate force Y. So for the largest ball, it's going to be equal to 11.5 F. For the, for the large ball, it's going to be 10.5 F. For the medium, it's going to be 9. And for the other two, for this one's going to be 8. And for the smallest one, it's going to be 7. And this is going to set our ball speed. 
So when we, well, as I said, when we touch, excuse me, when we run the game, we are going to call this function in the awake function. And that way we are going to set up the speed for our balls. So the force X is going to be the same for the largest, large, so on and so forth. So for every ball, but their force Y is going to be based on which ball we have. So if, if it's the largest one, 11.5, if it's the large one, 10.5, so on and so forth so this practically will only set the speed for our balls now let us program our ball bouncing so here we are going to create a void so void on trigger enter 2d which takes a collider 2d and we are going to name it target and we also need to go and let's do this now so that we don't forget it in our prefabs and for each of our ball select it and set it to be trigger on its circle collider so simply click on is trigger and now we can go back here and what we need to do is simply we need to check if our target dot tag is equal to ground so if we are colliding with the ground which is this one right here so if the ball touches the ground what we want to do is we need to say my body dot velocity so my body dot velocity is equal to new vector 2 and we are going to pass for the x 0 and for the y we are going to pass force y because this is our force y that we are setting here and we are going to pass it here when we touch our ground so we can test this right away and also select all of our balls or the prefabs of our balls and well, apply the ball script on it. So click on the ball script and apply that. And here or well, later we are going to attach our original ball and our pop sounds. But now if I run the game, we see that our ball is, it has a null reference. So let me just go and see what is the problem. So I think that we have forgot to put the rigid body. So yeah i forgot to call actually the rigid body so here also in the awake function i'm going to call just for the sake of argument in order to show this but we are going to manipulate it later so we need to say my body is equal to get component passing the rigid body component so excuse me for that i forgot to call our rigid body so anyway now going back here in our game if i run the game now we are going to see our ball bouncing when it touches the ground practically. We are going to stop here and in the next video we are going to program our ball moving left and right and add some other features. Anyway, if you like the video, comment, share, rate, subscribe and I will see you in the next video.